Hi, my name is Dr. Anjali Acharya, and I'm here today to discuss a subject that's of utmost importance for patients who have kidney disease. And that subject is hypotassium or hyperkalemia. So what is hypotassium? Potassium is a mineral found in most foods, and the body needs potassium to work normally. It keeps the heart beating and helps the nerves and muscles work. But people need only a certain amount of potassium. Hyperkalemia is a condition where there's elevated blood potassium level. The potassium level is higher than the upper limit of what's considered normal. Hyperkalemia is a common clinical problem in those with kidney disease. Mild increases in serum potassium level usually have no symptoms. The manifestations occur when there's moderate to severe increase in potassium level. The most serious manifestations of hyperkalemia are those that happen on the muscles and the heart. So this could result in muscle weakness or paralysis. It could also have effects on the heart rhythm leading to cardiac arrhythmias and sometimes in cardiac arrest. In patients with chronic kidney disease, they maintain their ability to excrete potassium at near normal levels until very late stages of the disease. I want to conclude by saying that hyperkalemia is not uncommon in those with chronic kidney disease and can occur in acute kidney injury as well. Sitting in with me is someone who knows a bit about hypotassium and kidney disease. She's a patient of mine. Marie has been on dialysis, and we've been working together to manage her potassium levels over the years. Marie, could you talk a little bit about how you found out about your CKD? Well, it all started back in 2003. I experienced certain symptoms I couldn't really explain at home, where I thought that I was retaining a lot of fluids, which I felt the symptom in my stomach. And as I got nauseated, um, ended up calling 911, went to the emergency room, and um, a lot of testing was done. Checking my um, high blood pressure, um, checking my blood sugar levels, and when an entire blood test um, was done, at this point, that's when it was explained to me that I'm heading in the direction of having chronic kidney disease, which the doctors explained to me the reason why I was retaining um, so much fluids. So a kidney biopsy was done to measure the damages to the kidney, how much function was left. The doctor that actually brought the news to me mentioned, I clearly remembered that um, you no longer have any kidney function. It's not just the left or the right, it's actually both of them. So this happened while you were in the hospital the very first time? Yes. And these are foods I have grew up eating that I love, especially fruits. Um, bananas, as we already know, are very high in potassium, while well, it may be very good um, for you know, others who have no chronic um, diseases for us is very um, poisonous, unfortunately. Um, there has to be uh, a balance, which is very hard to attain. It was very hard to start to manage every time that I'm thinking about eating that certain things should be restricted. Right. Wow, that must have been very difficult. Very. I remember how disappointed you were with the diagnosis and mm -hmm. after the first few conversations. Now, let me ask you, did you realize that this was life-threatening? I didn't think so at first until I started to read up more mm -hmm. what chronic kidney disease meant, um, what life was like to be on dialysis, and then reading more on the potassium that it can really definitely affect your heart, right. heart disease, heart attack, and... Um, and also with the phosphorus, when it stays under your skin, it weakens your bones, so everything becomes very brittle. So that's when I realized that this was extremely serious. So what was going through your mind when you first heard about the diagnosis? It was really hard. I think I remember during that time in the hospital, I was crying, I was calling family members and friends, Looking for additional information, to be honest, was very difficult mm -hmm. in terms of what should I expect? How would treatment be conducted? How many times a week? And I realized with me working during that time, and also I was still going to school, 
I realized that there would be a major interruption on my daily activities. Most kidney clinics accommodate trying to keep your lifestyle as it was prior to, especially if you were working or going to school. Some patients I know have completely stopped working or not doing anything, whereas in my case, I have tried to fit my daily routine into the schedule built around the dates that I have to go for treatment. You've done a phenomenal job in, in incorporating your other activities into your dialysis schedule. Yes. And I know how active you've been as a patient advocate in the dialysis yes. unit. Yes. I really commend you for that. Thank you, thank you. But I'm sure you're still facing challenges, physical as well as emotional. Would you like oh, to yes. talk about those? Some of the physical challenges has a lot to do with if a certain amount of fluids have been um, taken in, unfortunately, um, especially when it's time for you to go to sleep, it's very difficult because then the fluids um, backs up into the lungs mm -hmm. and it makes it very difficult to um, breathe. That's very dangerous. Also physically, lots of fatigue mm -hmm. at times um, during the week or during a particular day after treatment, it can definitely um, drain you out. With reference to hyperkalemia, mm -hmm. what type of challenges have you faced? Chest pain. Majorly chest pain if you have high potassium, hyperkalemia, um, because remember that it does um, attack the heart and it can definitely give you a heart attack. And I think what's really helping me to cope with everything that's happening is the fact that I have maintained working, being part of the Community Education Council for my district, being also a deacon um, at my church. So I have quite a lot of activities that I believe is really helping me to not so much focus on what's happening. I know it's there. I know the precautions that I have to um, take on a daily basis, but I tend not to dwell on it as I used to before. In my case, this is what you know I have to deal with, and I try to make the best of it. But also another coping mechanism is having the right support, um, family members and friends around you to really uplift and encourage and live as normal as they possibly can. Right. I know you have a very supportive family, but I think you've also done a phenomenal job. You've taken the initiative, and I think you've done very well emotionally and physically, despite all the challenges that you've faced. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it wasn't easy. Not N at all. Now, Mary, finally, I wanted to ask you, what's your final message to people watching this video? It's always good to keep a close monitoring on different symptoms that you're feeling, even if you are in good health, going to get a regular checkup, because it's really important, because there's certain things do run in your family, even, for example, if it's um, cancer, if you're not feeling yourself. I think maybe at this point, for me, um, if I had really paid close attention to what was changing, maybe it could have slowed down the whole process of um, full blown end stage renal disease, because it is possible to actually um, reduce the course of complete kidney failure. So I really would encourage everyone, whether if it's in good health or bad health, even if you think it might not be anything else, but there is a hunch, to really keep checking every three or every six months. Also surround yourself with positive, influential people um, that will be very understanding. They may not go through the same thing that you are, but providing that support really help to say that it's, it's not your fault, it's not anything that you have done, or if you know any friends or family members um, that may be going through the same thing, um, support them, encourage them, and even try to see what it's like right. to be there one day during treatment. Being very vigilant, informing yourself, doing research, um, as I have done. Murray, you're absolutely right, vigilance is very important and gathering all the information about your disease condition is very important to avoid the consequences. I would like to thank you so much for sharing your story with us and I hope that the viewers have found this very helpful 
And the most thing, important thing to remember is that high potassium is an issue that a lot of people with chronic kidney disease deal with. It can be treated, it can be contained. Remember, you can always discuss this issue with your healthcare provider. Feel free to contact the National Kidney Foundation and find more information on hyperkalemia and other kidney-related issues. I'd like to wish you all good health and good luck.